In the next couple of days, I'm going to start working on two big watercolor paintings in the same abstract style that I've been working on before. So I'm going to start two new ones for my mom. So it's a commission and I worked on some sketches already. It's a series, so they're going to go in the same room. So I want them to be coherent. I want, I want it to be apparent that they go together. So they're going to use the same colors. They're going to use similar shapes. The smallest one is a 16 by 20 inches. And the other one, I don't remember exactly how big it is. It's a bit bigger and it's a bit more rectangular. As always, before starting a new painting in this style, I'm a little bit stressed out because you never know how it's going to turn out. So I do a couple of paintings in this style, then I take a break of a couple of weeks and then I start again with new paintings and new series. So every time I start again, I get this irrational fear that maybe I forgot the technique or that it's been luck so far that some paintings have turned out good. It's just going to fail. But it won't, it won't. It's not due to luck, it's due to a lot of research and trial and error. I can do this. What's next is that I need to cut the paper that I have. I have a huge paper, I need to cut it for it to be the right size of the big paper. I already have 16 by 20 inch paper that is pre-cut, but the other size I need to cut it. Then I want to work a little bit on some color combinations. I already think that I know which colors I'm going to use, but I want to do a bit more test. Then I'm going to write a small list of the order in which I want to proceed in this painting. I might try some new things and then we're going to paint. So hopefully at the end of the next four days, I will have two completed paintings. As you saw, I cut this big paper right there. It was, I always hate cutting paper. No, I don't hate it. It's not that bad. I just dislike cutting paper because I'm always scared of ruining my paper because the blade goes sideways or when it's a small paper, I have a paper cutter and it works fine, but it doesn't take larger size. Luckily, I got this mat recently uh, and it has some measurements on there. So I was able to use that for a uh, part of the cutting that I had to do. Then the other problem that I had is that, as you probably do it yourself, you need to stick your watercolor paper to a surface. Usually I use a wood board, but none of the wood boards that I had were big enough. So I kind of was struggling to find something that would be big enough to accommodate this big paper, but I found a big canvas. I have never taped a watercolor paper to a canvas, so I'm not sure what the result will be. I guess we'll just have to see. I'm going to use my color mixing sketchbook and I'm going to play a little bit with color to find a color palette that I like and that I would like to use for this, these paintings. They're going to have the same color palette. It's going in a room that has two colors and on the walls. One is a dark grayish blue and the other one is like my buff titanium. I don't know if you have buff titanium. It looks like that. I might use a touch of pink also. But yeah, we'll see. We'll do some tests first. Before we start working on the color palette though, I had a question for you because every time I ask you questions, you guys are the best. You always give me good advice and I appreciate it so, so much. So I have a spice rack right here. Uh, I haven't washed it, but um, I ended up using something else for my spices. But I thought maybe I could figure out a way of using it in my studio, either to store 
store some stuff in there. Even if I don't end up using these, this rack could be useful for something, I think. Tell me if you have any ideas for me. I'd like to upcycle it. I already tested some stuff out right here, but there's other combinations that I would like to try out. I got Lunar Black because I love my Van Gogh Dusk color, which are composed of a random color plus a super granulating black. I'm sorry, I can't speak. You might hear my cat in the background it's because he wants to eat, but it's not time yet. <laughs> so I played around with some colors and yeah, I'm gonna try some stuff out. On this page, I also wanted, let's try this first. I recently mixed Identrone Blue and Crinacridone Sienna. I love the result, it created like a super dark color and I can't speak today, I'm so sorry. If I put more blue than Crinacridone Sienna, then it creates a bluish black and if I put more Sienna, then it's a bit on the redder side. So I'd like to try that a little bit. It's such a pretty color. Yeah, for real, I love this color. I think I'm going to try the same thing, but with a tiny bit of Potter's Pink in the mix, just to see if we can get some color separation. See if we can get an interesting result. I think it's a really good color. These two colors together will be so pretty, I'm sure. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see well, but so pretty. Okay, so I did the same mix with the Identron Blue and Quinacridone Sienna, but I added more Quinacridone Sienna. It wasn't very mixed, I think. Yeah, and you see this is more like a brown, so that's too much Quinacridone Sienna for what I'm trying to achieve. I did this test yesterday. Then I looked at the reference picture from the the room where this painting is gonna be hanged and I feel like this might be a little bit too purple. I think that this blue that I'm looking for needs to be more on the green side and I think that I'm going to go with this one. Lunar Black and Blue Appetite Genuine, both from Daniel Smith. This is going to be our mix, so I think that maybe I should just play around a little bit more with this color mix. Do a couple of swatches here and then we can start thinking about a plan and work on our first layer. I'm almost ready to start working. I selected my color palette, I put it here so I always have a visual of what the color should look like. Then I did some sketches in Procreate. The first layer will be only the palest colors and then I'm gonna have a second layer composed of light blues, uh, light wash, and then I'm going to have a third layer with the darker colors so that when I paint, I, yeah, I know where to place my colors. It's my first time using Procreate as a reference and uh, we'll see how it's gonna go. Usually I only use my thumbnails. It's exciting to always be um, switching things up. Let's clean up this workspace and then we're gonna start working on the small painting first because the other one is kind of intimidating. So we'll start small, small, 16 by 20 inches, but, and then we'll move on to the bigger paper. 
This is a brush that I bought especially for these kinds of paintings because before buying this one, my biggest brush was this one. And it's not very big when you're trying to paint on a paper of this size, especially if you want to make some big washes. So at first I was trying to find a brush like this. I think this is a mop brush, but this is pretty much, this is one of the biggest size I could find. I found one, only one that was twice as big and it was so expensive. It was almost $170. So I thought maybe I would wait <laughs> before purchasing it because yeah, maybe there would be other options. And this is when I found this one. This is a completely different shape, but so far I found that it works really well. I did a test um, not too long ago, but this is the first time I'm going to use it on a big painting like this. So I put some salt on it. I don't think you saw because my battery was dead. I put some salt on it and I also splashed some nail polish remover. So hopefully we're going to get some very nice texture and then we're going to add another layer, a darker layer. But now while this dries, we're going to work on the bigger point. Put some salt on it. Day two, layer two. I removed all the salt from the paintings and now I'm ready to start layer two. I'm going to start working on the small one first because I kind of have a layer 1.5 to do on the small painting. So I'm gonna do that quickly and then I am going to start working on the big painting and just alternate between the two as we have done before. something different this time which is to add some mark making from the beginning usually I wait until the end and it's the last step is to do some mark makings and it's very fun very intuitive but this time I decided why not add some after the first layer then I'm going to paint on top but some of it will show through I'm sure and maybe some of it will be covered we'll see I'm gonna slap some more paint on it, add the plastic wrap and let it dry. This is the most nerve wracking step because this is the step that I control the least. This is the time where I have to let go and just let the paint do its thing. So wish me luck.
finished the plastic layer and now I just need to let it dry. So I'm going to move this canvas aside and start working on the mark making for the small painting. Then do the same step with the small painting and then I prefer my paintings to be completely dry before I remove the plastic layer. I feel like it always gives a better result. I don't know if it's just in my head or not, but whatever. This step uses a lot of paint, so I guess that's what they're for. If I don't use them, what's the use of having them?
day three. I'm hoping that today is the day that we finish both paintings. I took some pictures of these paintings, I put them in Procreate and I mapped out a plan for the finishing touches, the last steps that I need to do. I always like to do that at the end because I'm going to add some bold white lines, I'm, I might want to add some more paint in some areas but I want to make sure it's going to look good before I do it because I don't want to overwork the painting and also I have access to digital help, so why not use it? So I, I can show you maybe an example. This is the photo that I took, but then I thought maybe I'm gonna add some paint, but I wanna see if it's gonna look good, so I added this layer. I like it, and then I decided that I would also add some details, some pink spots, some, yeah, so the pink spots, some white lines, and then some fine details. So this is what it's gonna look like. So this helps me to plan ahead a little bit and make sure that what I'm gonna do is going to look good because it would suck so much to do something that ruins the paintings at this stage, at this end stage. I work so long on it. I stressed out a little bit sometimes and to ruin it now when they're almost finished, it would just be such a heartbreak. So yeah, that's why I'm using some tools that help me make sure that, well, at least as much as I can, um, to create a better end result. Now is also the step where I'm working on the flow of the painting. I want these paintings to have a certain movement in them and adding a little bit of blue in some specific areas is gonna help me to achieve that goal. So I'm hoping that today is gonna be over. We're gonna have two finished paintings. This makes me think that one day I need a bigger studio when I have a, a bigger production. Because with this style, there's a lot of waiting time, but working on two paintings at the same time allowed me to alternate between the two and to create two paintings in the same amount of time that it would take me to create one because it takes a couple of days. So if I had a bigger studio, I could work on a big series with like 10 paintings and, but now it's just not doable, but I'm just putting it in the universe and then maybe one day. So subscribe to know if one day I get my studio, because maybe in, in five, maybe in 10 years, I'll have it and you'll be like, yeah, I watched her when she had a tiny studio. Okay, so we're now at the last step. I already 
did some lines using white watercolor. You can see some lines here, but I'm gonna go over them using acrylics. So I'm gonna use my golden acrylics in the color titanium white. I put some on my palette right here and I put some retardant medium in it so it doesn't dry as fast. I like this texture better too because this paint is quite thick. It's it's heavy body acrylics and um, I want it to flow a little bit more, but not too much. So I find that adding retardant helps me control the texture a bit better. So I'm going to go over the lines. I'm going to add some splashes of white here and there, and then this painting is going to be done. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the smaller painting and then everything is going to be done. All right, so let's start. I'm gonna get my reference image from Procreate. All right. So um, I discovered that using white watercolor for this was very helpful because it's not as permanent as acrylics, as you know. I find that it allows me to place the lines where I think they're gonna go without being like I can I can have kind of a do-over if I mess up. So I find that it's nice. It's a nice first step. And then once I'm sure of my placement, then I go over it with acrylics. which is a lot more opaque and which I mean once it's there it's it's hard to remove but that's why I add retardant too so I can move it around if I need a little bit at first when I bought the white watercolor I didn't know much about watercolors I just bought like a bunch of random colors and having a good white in pretty much every other medium is like an essential so I bought a good professional white in watercolors and then I realized that there's not a lot of use for white paint in watercolors because, well, watercolor is pretty transparent. You know, your paper usually is white. And so why, what would you do with a white color? So that's why I realized for a while I never used it. But then I realized that this white is opaque. It's a Windsor Newton titanium white. It's not as opaque as acrylics, but it's opaque enough so I can use it for this instance, like placing my white lines. And it's been super helpful because first I went in right away with acrylics and it was quite stressful. You don't want to mess up. But that's what I've been doing been enjoying this workflow for a little bit and uh, yeah it's working well for me right now I'm done. I had a little assistant here. Hello. So yeah, here they are in a bedroom setting. So I'm gonna of course show you when I peel off the tape because I think it's gonna be very satisfying and when I sign the painting so I'm gonna show you the last steps but I just wanted to say goodbye now I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like leave a comment subscribe if you're not already subscribed and you know what would help me a lot actually if you want to help me is if you go check out another of my video you have to check out I think a couple of minutes at least because otherwise YouTube says like oh this person started this video but this video is not good enough so the person left 
So if you want to help me out, you can check out another video. Make sure to watch at least a couple minutes or the whole video if you can, or play my video in the background if you want to help me, help my channel grow. Um, I would appreciate it, but of course, you don't have to. Thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you soon. Bye!